Good morning, everyone. This is a special webcast today. Uh, I'm Nigel and Bike. Uh, you guys probably recognize me from our Autodesk Virtual Academy sessions, if uh, that's something you do go to. Uh, today, I'm joined by Joe Meradian, who is one of our subscription managers here at Kativ, and uh, Jorge Fernandez, who is uh, one of our solution engineers as well. I'm sure you've seen him before, too. So uh, today, we're going to be talking about some Vault Professional. Uh, the way we got into you know doing this topic is data management is kind of an important thing, um, as well as a couple of changes within the uh, the structure of how things are going to be purchased from Autodesk in the next couple months. Uh, Joe will go that to go into that a little bit deeper, but um, within these next couple of weeks here is uh, your last chance to get Vault Professional as a perpetual license, meaning that you own it kind of forever. So. Um, so like I said, uh, July 31st is the end of sale for perpetual licenses. Uh, Joe will go over that a little bit more, but uh, it's gone away for particular products already in the past, and uh, for July 31st is going to be the end of the rest of it. So that's suites, Vault, um, some simulation products, a few other things. Uh, we're going to go over why even Vault Professional. I know some of you are all using Vault Basic, um, or maybe not even Vault at all. Um, and we'll definitely show you, you know, why data management is a very important thing to look into in regards to uh, maintaining, you know, your structure and having things go the way you want them to. A um, little bit of demonstration, kind of showing, you know, why Vault, a couple of its capabilities, uh, incentives, including, you know, that uh, promotion that we have as well. As usual, we're going to go over uh, Q and A. So definitely, if you do have any questions at any point during the webcast, feel free to type them into the chat box, and uh, we'll definitely cover them. Uh, the end of session. So, with uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and pass it along to uh, Joe and Jorge, and we'll get into it. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. Thank you, Nigel, for that introduction. You know, as you mentioned, we have a pretty busy agenda today. Uh, the first thing I want to talk to you about is is uh, this timeline here. And many of you that are on this webcast today actually were on a session two weeks ago, which was all about the licensing options for Autodesk. So this may look familiar to some of you. Uh, rather than going through this entire thing, I'm going to let you take a quick look at it, and I'm going to talk really about where we are today and what we have to uh, to accomplish in the next six to seven or five to six weeks here. Um, so as you can tell, you know, Autodesk has has announced that the changes to perpetual licenses were coming as early as March 2015. So it should be no surprise to a lot of you that you know the perpetual licenses do have an end date, which is going to be approaching here in a few weeks. Fast forward to today, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, towards the end of June now, we have towards the end of um, July to acquire any additional perpetual licenses uh, that you might need. So again, July 31st, 2016 is the end of sale of perpetual licenses. Some have already been phased out, but the ones that we're going to focus on are tools like Vault Professional, simulation and some of the suites. Those are available for purchase today. Those will be going away uh, in a few weeks here. So we really want to make sure that we explain how that transition is going to affect you and uh, you know give you a path to uh, you know acquire anything that you need now while you have the most options available to you. All right, so most of you that are on this webcast have what is called a maintenance plan. A maintenance plan goes hand in hand with a perpetual license of software. This is something that most of you are familiar with. So in the past, and, and still today, you can buy a perpetual license of the software, which means you buy the rights to use that software indefinitely. Uh, that means that you, you, know, you purchase the software, it is yours to keep. Whether you have maintenance or not, that is your software license. As long as you have hardware that will run it, you get to use that software for as long as you please. What the maintenance plan does is it goes hand in hand with a perpetual license. The maintenance plan keeps that perpetual license up to date by enrolling, you know, by uh, giving you the latest software releases as they're available. So you may not use the latest software releases immediately. However, they are available to you and they are yours to download and to install at any time. Additionally, you get select cloud services with the software. Uh, this can be anything from 25 gigabytes of cloud storage. There's also rendering capabilities, collaboration tools, and there's even tools uh, you know, for uh, viewers. So if you're on site at a customer location and you want to pull up a model and, and show them maybe an assembly, uh, you can do that with some of their online viewers and become a little bit more mobile. And lastly, you get technical support from Autodesk. So this is basic support 
via email or through uh, online case access so you can log a case and within 24 hours they will uh, reply to you and, and hopefully get a resolution to you. Uh, one thing that most of our customers do, and I'm going to touch on this pretty quickly here, is, is uh, they enroll in what we call Kativ Lifeline. Lifeline is a Kativ in-house support that's separate from the maintenance plan. <clears throat> what that gets you is one-on-one -on -one support through phone calls, emails, remote desktop, similar to this, uh, you know, this webcast, and we can actually see the issues that you're having and, and solve those for you in a much quicker way uh, than email support. So that's something that's available. Again, it's separate than the maintenance plan, uh, but you do get the technical support from Autodesk and then the additional support from Kativ if you desire. So that is kind of what uh, you get with the maintenance plan. Most of you have an active maintenance plan today. And one thing I want to make very clear to you is if you have a maintenance plan, as long as you keep it up to date, you'll continue to receive the updates that you've been getting for all these years through this transition to the term-based licensing. So again, nothing's going to change for you. As long as you keep that current, you'll continue to get the new versions as you have been. If you don't have maintenance, you'll be, you'll be left off with what you have today, and you'll be able to use that indefinitely, but you will not get the latest versions, and there's not going to be an upgrade path from an old perpetual license to the newer versions in the future. So it's definitely important that you keep that up to date. Now, um, you know, this is pretty important with Vault, and we're going to get into the financial reasons behind it, um, but what I want to point out here is, you know, the maintenance plan is going to be a more cost-effective solution. We're going to show you the specifics of that, uh, but one thing I really want to do before we hand this off to Jorge and, and show you the demonstration of the tools is I'd like to see who on this webinar has, uh, you know, which tools you're using. Some of you may have Vault Basic, which is included in a lot of the suites. Some of you may have Professional, Workgroup. There's multiple versions. Jorge's going to cover those. Some of you may not have Vault at all. So we're going to put a little poll in here in a second. And I, I just want to you guys to take a second, select which one of these uh, answers pertains to you. And, uh, you know, we're going to give you guys a, a, about a minute to complete this. So please do that, and then we'll get an idea of, of really where you guys are at on the call right now. All right, so it looks like uh, about most of you have put your uh, your votes in here. I'm going to pass this over to Jorge because he's going to present a little bit about Vault Basic, Show Vault uh, Professional, and, and some of the different tools that are available. Jorge, uh, go ahead and, and take it from here and, and, and share them the results that we just got and uh, go ahead and, and show them the, the demonstration that we're going to be covering here. All right, thanks for that, Joe. Yeah, so you know, we, we wanted to understand a little bit more about who who's got what um, what versions, what, what what you're using, right? Because depending on on what you've got there, we we're gonna discuss uh, a little more uh, about that, right? And if we break it up into some of the different sections where we'll discuss today, is I think some of this will apply to some of you that are not using Vault just yet. Some of you that are using the basic version and then either work group professional or taking advantage of other features out of there. So what we're going to discuss today, a little summary first, is first we're going to take a look at uh, how you can use it to secure your, your pro uh, intellectual property today and be able to reuse information, how you can connect more people within it, uh, and be able to uh, have a controlled process where you can actually see engineering change orders. You can have everything in a release state and be able to move it out uh, into the shop floor, you know, for example, or anybody else that needs to have more information. And it, just if I back up just one one step here, um, I want to talk a little bit about why we decided to do this webinar. You know, as I was visiting customers last week, uh, one in particular that ha that does a uh, wood, ch wood chipper uh, conveyance. We were talking about the uh, have Vault Basic, and they had thought about Vault Professional, but weren't sure. And we we thought when I mean, we spoke about the price difference after July thirty uh, first, you know, starting August first, then it became a deeper conversation about well, should we consider this now? So that's why we brought this webinar to you guys today to talk about what are some of those benefits. So let's look at those benefits here, and then uh, as Joe said at the end, we'll look at a cost analysis of it as well. So you know, if we look at you know just Making sure that your data is, um, you know, captured and it's reusable. You know, there was a um, 
a tech clarity study that was done where they found almost a third of engineers said that they had issues you know trying to reuse their information so that that problem exists today I, I think a lot of you realize that already sometimes it's because we decide you know hey um, I'm not sure exactly if that's good or not is it really released Did, when was the last time it went out so vault basic gives you the ability to do just that one basic thing be able to capture information and be able to reuse it and we'll see some of that today you know, another part of that st study was, you know, they, they saw that um, when people are trying to work in, in a, a collaborative environment, that a quarter of those companies were having issues with that. And what this means to us, you know, if, if I pause on this this um, section just a little bit, you know, yeah, I know even when I was in engineering uh, before I came on board to Gativ, a lot of the times we in engineering feel we've got all the information. You know, we maybe it takes us five minutes to print it out and go give it to the shop floor, maybe a couple minutes to do a PDF. You know, there's this this idea that, yeah, everything's running fine. We don't have any issues. Maybe there's some issues down the line and things going out, but generally speaking, in engineering, we're okay. But what we need to stop and think about is the people that it affects around us, right? People out in the shop floor, the manufacturing engineer, people in purchasing. So these are things that Vault can help you with, Vault professional and Vault worker. And then when we looked at, at the study, looked at you know almost half the companies having issues managing the changes because you know who it affects is important. What the status of these things are, are important. Instead of just having the shop guy come out to us, you know, I, I remember I was at a customer's a couple months ago actually when we were discussing Vault, and literally someone from the shop floor came into the office and asked us some uh, asked the engineer for some questions. So. You know, th this is just a, an ongoing uh, issue. I think that is out there that a lot of times we don't, you know, sim we we don't sit down and think about what are the repercussions of the way we're doing things today, right? How much time is really being spent? It might be five minutes, ten minutes, but hey, that's downtime, right? That's time that could be used a little more efficiently, where people can see this information and find it quickly. So before we jump into the demonstration, I just wanted to make really clear a few highlights of what are the differences between the different versions of Vault. You know, when we look at Vault Basic, it's going to help you again with data reuse, searching for information quickly. It also has Microsoft inter integration built into it. But when we move to something into Workgroup, you're talking more about integrating people with non-CAD uh, access so that they don't have to have AutoCAD to get into it at this point. We can start doing revision controls and applying life cycles where we can say something's in a work in progress, something's in a review state or in a release state, and then who has access to that information. And then if you start considering well professional, then you start considering having um, uh, a change order management, uh, bomb control as well so that you can actually integrate to your ERP systems. Or if you have multiple locations and you want to replicate between them, these are some of the key features. These are some of the highlights. There are a lot of other features that we can share with you, of course, as well. Uh, but I just wanted to make sure we touched on these. On top of that, there's one other layer that's really nice uh, for, for people, and that's Vault Office. We've done a, a webinar on these before as well, and we can always point you to that link. Uh, but what Vault Office does is, for those people within the office that need to also control supporting documentation, so that, you know, there might be an Excel sheet from procurement, let's say, or there might be a PDF spec sheet of Loctite that you're including it with your assembly. So these are things that you want to manage as well, and it gives the ability of someone who doesn't have CAD to have a, a lower cost to it and be able to interact with the project still and give relevant information to the uh, process as well as be a part of the actual engineering process and be a reviewer in a change order process for example. So these are some of the again highlights of, of using something like Vault Office so you don't have to have a full Vault professional license to give the ability to someone else uh, within the organization to manage their documentation. So with that said, let's jump into the demonstration now. Uh, we're going to go over into, um, uh, let's look at a, an entire process of what it would look like for, let's say, someone on the shop floor, first of all, someone who doesn't have CAD but needs to have access to release data. So what we're accessing here is the web browser here that allows me to look at released information. So through here, I can actually navigate through the folder structure if I know it, but there's also a built-in area here where I can actually search for information as well. So if I need to get to the actual file, I can do that right through here. I can see that this file has been released already, and I can get some more information on it. 
Maybe I want to see what category it's in, uh, what revision it's last at, make sure maybe the printed version I have is the right one. Maybe I need to print it from here as well, or geez, in some cases, I just want to see, wait, where, what assembly is this attached to? What other assemblies did I build on, this on? I could have sworn I used that before. So there's a lot of different ways here that we can interrogate the data and not have to go into the engineering office and necessarily have to spend some time there trying to figure out what's going on. Instead, I can myself go into this, this view and be able to see the assembly myself and interrogate it a little bit further. So you're seeing here a, a viewer or built into Internet Explorer where I can actually see this information. I can interact with it a little bit more. I can measure. I can mark up uh, this, uh, this, this thing here, for example, and be able to tell the engineers, hey, you know what? Last time I worked on this, I remember that we had some issues with, the, with uh, mounting this, so we want to actually tell people to mount it vertically, for example. So very quickly, very easily, I'm able to tell someone here uh, what needs to happen and be able to say, I want to print it out or save it and send it as an email. So already we're, we're seeing some, some, uh, some of those capabilities that I mentioned. Vault Office would give you this ability as well. Vault Office actually adds the ability for someone to go into this web client and check in and check out documentation or this DWF as well. So kind of one other thing to kind of keep in mind in here when we're looking at the different capabilities inside of Vault and Vault Professional and Vault Office. So now if we go and change, um, let, let's change our minds a little bit. Think of now the engineering manager that's going to receive this information in an email form. So what we'll do here is in an email now, I've been given this from the shop floor, and I have this DWF that has a markup on it. So the markup can be opened through the email, as, as we all know, you know, PDFs, Excel sheets, and so forth. But what's going to be really great is to be able to reuse this information and commence a change order based off of this. So as the engineering manager, I want to document this. I don't want to have to necessarily send an email out, and that's the way we keep track of things. I know that works. It does, right? But there's nothing better than being able to actually check this in and have this documented somewhere. So I'm actually logging into Vault through the email application here, Outlook, and being able to check this in. We'll simply select here where we want to actually uh, put this. So I'll just create a quick email folder for us. And I'm able to manage this email and any other documentation inside of Vault very quickly and very easily. So as the engineering manager now, I'm going to go to Vault, and I want to tell it that I want to actually... Um, manage that right and, and initiate a change order so what I'll do is I'll go to that email that I created in here I can actually see or preview that email inside of vault another really nice way here just adding more to that collaboration piece of this as well as that DWF what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select both of these and we can make it part of a change order process now so we can actually initiate this and have full control over it so we'll add a few quick notes. And we can now start to see some more information on this, such as anybody who's part of this process who either has Vault Office or has a seat of Vault Professional can now come in here and see this DWF, this markup that was created previously. That way everyone's uh, in, in complete collaboration, right? We don't have to call each other up or email each other. Hey, where'd you leave that one file? It's all here in one central location. We can also see the status of this and be able to see, well, this is in the creation state of the ECO, so I want to save this and, and be able to submit this to the next stage, uh, which is by just simply submitting it up here. And what's nice here is we don't have to manually send an email. A notification will go out to the correct people according to the information that, um, that uh, I'm sorry, the, the routing that we've set up for people here as well. So uh, again, we can come over here, we can see all this information, we can uh, add comments to this as well and be able to keep moving this forward so that this um, this entire uh, change order process actually moves forward. So we'll simply submit this to the next stage. Now, as before I give this to an actual engineer, maybe procurement needs to take a quick peek at this as well. So if we change our hats again, and now we're moving into someone from procurement, someone who has a Vault Office license and needs to be a part of this process, that person can now log into this as well. And I'll uh, go ahead and do a quick refresh 
logging in as the procurement person, I have a notification at the bottom right-hand corner and in my work list here of a change order that's happening. I can take a closer look at that and I can see in the file section a preview of it so I can know, oh, you know what, there is an actual uh, bill of materials that was already a legacy piece of this that I need to update now. In that case, this person can now go into this and say, well, let's go into that Excel sheet that I remember I had. I can double click it to open it and start to work on that Excel sheet myself without having to go find somebody, go to a network drive or anything. Again, everything's in one central location. I can now make a change to this and say, well, you know what, I need to highlight this because this is a long lead item now that I need to make sure that gets ordered quickly. So I can save this. I have a vault tab now where I can log in and check in as Polly from purchasing. This one file that needs to be attached to the entire assembly as well. So very easily, very quickly, I'm able to be an uh, outside person from engineering, uh, so to speak, and be able to interact with the entire team as well and get this information in. Now that we've talked a little bit about that, about the engineering manager, the procurement person, this procurement person, by the way, can take this a step further and go to that change order as well or add this information to the change order also. So I'll go ahead and check this in, actually. I can right click it and add it to an existing change order as well where I'll be able to find all change orders. I find the one that's open here and now it's part of it. Now I can see there's history here that this Excel file sure enough is part of it. I can now um, uh, go to that change order, open it up and be able to say well you know what I'm ready to have the engineer work on this now. Let's go ahead and submit it. I am part of this process. An email notification goes out and now I can get into my different mode of the responsible engineer and get a notification again that I now have something that I need to work on and I can see its status here. So again, right there we're seeing there's this full collaboration all in one location, right? I don't have to go searching in different locations. In order to get this work done, what I actually need to do as a responsible engineer is go to that actual assembly here and I'm going to make a copy of it. So now we're looking at some basic vault functionality here where we're able to say let's uh, go ahead and do a copy design of this. There's a lot of other tools we can do in here, like we can rename the files straight through Vault. We can actually move the files in here as well. Things that you typically take us as engineers a considerable amount of time sometimes to do that and we don't want to, and we want to make sure that it gets done correctly. So right here we'll do a quick copy design of this. We can, as a matter of fact, take this a step further and choose one of these parts to actually be uh, replaced with something else as well. So I can right click this, this part and replace it with something else. So we'll go here into my folder structure. I actually know which part I need to replace this with. Here it is, this one right here, so we can actually change the mount. And at the same time when it does that replace, and notice it automatically realizes that I need to make a copy of the top level assembly. We have a lot of different features over here as well. These we've actually covered in some of our uh, Autodesk Virtual Academy sessions. So by all means, if you want to know more about this copy design tool uh, in our Kativ playlist on YouTube, you can actually see more information about this where we can actually uh, use the part numbering schemes here, take folder structures and things of that nature to be able to create this copy design. For now, I'll go ahead and copy these files uh, with that new replacement so I can actually uh, make a change to it as well. So as a responsible engineer, I can actually take this assembly now. I can work with this copy. Uh, you notice it's a work in progress. I'll double click it here so we can get it open inside of Inventor and make the changes that actually need to be made to that mount. By the way, something you're seeing on my screen here is this nice little functionality where I can actually see recent files that have been opened and what their status is in Vault. I can see here these are uh, locked, for example. Just another nice little feature for you. All right, so now that this file is opened, uh, it's checked out to me. I can always see that by going to my Vault browser here that, sure enough, that file is checked out. I'll go right back to my model and choose to change out this mount. So I'm going to right click it and just use some standard features here inside of Inventor to be able to just replace this component. And I'm going to search inside of Vault. 
now you're seeing some regular vault functionality with uh, Inventor where I can actually search for the files that I want and change it to that vertical, uh, vertically mounted one instead. We'll let it uh, take the changes here, save this, and of course check this in as well. And we'll make sure it takes its children. Yep. All right. Now that we have that inside of Vault, uh, we have the the component that needs to that had that change that needed to be made. I can go back over to Vault. I'll do a quick refresh here, and I can see that there's a a new version of that. But now, as a responsible engineer, what I need to do is make sure this gets locked so nobody else can see this. You know, this is where we can. Uh, manage how we change revs where when we go from release to work in progress we can have it bump up a rev I can right click on this go to change state and be able to say you know what this file and this file here needs to be changed to a release state for example so we have that ability to do that right inside of here as well so that very easily we can control the information and who gets access to what at any time that is now in a release state. I can move this forward now and add this to the change order, actually, that we have here. Oh, I'm the responsible engineer, then the administrator. We can, uh, so that's another a thing, right, that we can uh, have these things happen, right, we, where we have restrictions and we make sure that things don't happen where they're not supposed to, right? This part should have gone in there as a work in progress, actually. So we can always roll back revisions, by the way, and things like that. Things that we would actually teach you when we do a Vault implementation, by the way. So when we want to take this to the next level now, though, we want to be able to uh, do a bomb management in here and be able to have this integrated with our ERP system. The way we do that is we assign an item to it. So assigning an item means, you know, when you think of an item, think of everything that it takes to make this part. Right, you have spec sheets maybe, you have supporting documentation and things like that. So creating an item inside of, of uh, Vault here is what's going to allow us to control this as a whole. So we can go over here to its bill of materials, for example, and we can take a look at its entire branch here and see all the components that make up this entire assembly. This item number can be different from a part number because the item number would match up to like your ERP system, for example things that are actually going to be exported to ERP. As a matter of fact, if I wanted to add more things in here as someone for purchasing, for example, I can go ahead and say that I want to add something from an existing item already. It might be like an install kit or a repair kit or service kit, for example, that we want, might want to actually add to this. And we can also control the quantity for those. So I can say, I'm actually going to need 10 of these kits for this assembly, for example. Or, you know, it might be more or less, of course, but to give you uh, some more information about what it, the capabilities are inside of here. Now that we've added this, we can save this and be able to also control the release state of this entire uh, item. So we can say, well, we want to be able to um, save this, be able to um, control this blue materials and say who gets access to this and when, right? So by simply right-clicking, we can actually change the state of it and be able to say that this is now a released item, release all of the components inside of it. That way, we can actually export this. So when we talk about uh, being able to use ERP with this, we're talking about two things. One, you can export this out and be able to say how you want to export it out so you can import it into ERP. So over here, I'll just save it to my local... My local workspace for now. Next. And then over here, we can give it all the relevant information. So we can actually map these properties so that they match exactly the properties in your ERP system uh, or, or MRP system, by the way, for that matter. So we can say which values we actually want to come over. You see here there's a, a lot of different attributes we can actually choose from and can be configured so that they map correctly and finally get this exported out so all the correct information is going to ERP. This is one way to do it. This is a slightly manual way, quote unquote, to do it. But there are integration methods as well, by the way, where we can have bidirectional associativity or where this automatically sends it out as soon as it gets released so that you can make this even more effortless 
uh, and make it a much more collaborative environment where everyone is able to see all the correct information in the right place at the right time as well. So, in you know, in a nutshell, you know, we, we discussed how you can uh, look at this information. Uh, even if you don't have CAD access, you can have Vault Office access as well, so you can still control your own documentation that is relevant to the entire uh, project or design. Uh, you can use Basic Vault to do a lot of great functionality, like be able to reuse information or find information. And you can also, in the end, be able to take this and integrate it with your ERP system or whatever other uh, document or whatever other um, management you ha system you have for your actual um, uh, purchasing. So I also want to discuss a little bit about what Kativ can do for this. You know, one of the things we've done in the past is, the, you know, tell you what Vault can do for you. But I wanted to make sure whether you go with Kativ or whether you do this on your own, how should you approach an implementation of Vault Professional? So re regardless of which direction you go, you, there, we do offer a course catalog class. Uh, Kativ actually recently released a course catalog of different classes you can take from us. And one of them is how to do this on your own if you'd like to do that. So it's an administrative class that we teach you some of these features and functionality and be able so you can be able to uh, implement yourself. Either way, what an implementation should look like is a phased approach where you first do a basic implementation, get people introduced to it and have fast adoption. That way people start using some of the information in there, uh, start adding some of the maybe uh, the past project or the current project you're working on and give them some a few, you know, four to six weeks, maybe even a month or two, I should say, uh, to be able to work with it. After you've done that, then you configure it and be able to say how do you actually want the bomb uh, properties to look, what work, what life cycles do you want, who do you want to be a part of engineering change order processes, uh, what type of security settings you want so people have the right access, uh, and then finally training and then ongoing mentoring is something that we definitely recommend and provide to a lot of our customers. And as far as as far as an ongoing thing as well, something to think about as you use Vault is how am I going to take care of this in the future? So a lot of the times people want to what you want to consider is making sure you have backups that are running, you know, smoothly and continuously. Uh, make sure that your database is growing at a healthy uh, rate. Um, you also want to make sure you apply service packs when they're needed and so forth. So actually, uh, Kativ, we have developed uh, something called Kativ Vault Care where we can help you do this. A lot of times when we talk to customers and we go and do an upgrade, what ends up happening is maybe your backup hasn't been running for a few weeks or months, which is a very scary thought, right? Everything's working just fine, but you want to make sure you have a backup. That's part of the reason for having something like this, right? So we take a proactive approach and make sure we actually get these things going, make sure service packs are in there, as well as bridge the gap between IT and engineering. We want to make sure that, you know, IT sometimes doesn't necessarily know how Vault works, or engineering doesn't necessarily know all that needs to be known about the server side of things. So we make sure we bridge that gap and make sure that we are able to predict uh, when you need to be able to make some uh, planning, for example, on new hardware resources, uh, new requirements for the new release, so that you can stay on top of technology and adopt the new releases. So you're not afraid to take on 2017 release or 2018 release when it comes out. You're prepared, you're ready to go, and, and not have to worry or have this you know, uh, fear of upgrading, right? That's what we want to remove. So now that we've discussed what the process looks like, you know the the um, what some of the benefits are. Again, I want to I want to mention that the reason we we decided to cover this webinar is because as I was out there with a customer, I realized that there are, there could be a lot of other people that want to take advantage of the pricing before it changes in August. So I'll let uh, Joe take over uh, from here and cover some of that um, some of the, that information you definitely want to know before you make a decision. Yeah, thank you, Jorge, and uh, great job showing the tools. You know, if anyone on this has any questions, remember to type those into uh, the bar over on the side, and we'll be happy to answer those towards the end. 
you know, in addition, um, you know, I see a lot of you are Lifeline customers. You are also, uh, you know, Kativ customers, and um, I'm familiar with some of you on the line today. So I implore you to reach out to us if you have any more technical questions about Vault, if there's anything about Vault Care through Kativ, Vault implementations, anything like that. If there's any questions you have, feel free to reach out to us at any time. Um, so why now is a really good question. You know, looking at the attendance on this webinar and then just the experience we have working with, with the thousands of customers that we have, is, is that people are in different places. You know, so we have companies that we work with that are just a one or two man shop and you know what they're going to need is a bit different than what a, a multi-billion dollar organization is going to need. Uh, so I wanted to kind of share with you, um, you know, some of the options that are available today, the pricing that's available today, and moving forward two months, what your options are going to be then. Um, so today, you know, you have the option to buy a perpetual license of Vault. You have the option to rent Vault through a peer subscription model. And either of those are going to be better fitting towards different people. But what I really want to focus on today is the fact that there are two options available to you. And one of those options will not be available in about set five to six weeks here. Uh, so I really want to spend a lot of time and make sure that you guys understand that. So with the, the desktop licensing, the subscription-based licensing, you know, it's a lot lower cost of entry. So if you're a small startup company or if you're new to Vault or if you want to just, you know, try it for a year, then it's, it's a really good opportunity for you to do that at a pretty low cost. So you can get into it and get out of it pretty quickly, but it's pretty flexible. And uh, that's something that even a smaller organization or somebody that's new to data management in general uh, should be aware of. Now, we also work with a lot of co companies that are very well established. You know, they may have a hundred engineers, if not even more than that, and they have hundreds of perpetual licenses of Vault already. And what our, our goal is, is to convey to you is if you are in that environment, if you're in that situation, you like what you have, you know, you, you plan on continuing to use Vault, uh, there's a couple things that you might want to consider. You know, the, the perpetual licenses will not be available in a couple months. So if you're planning for growth, you know, now or even a year or two from now, it would benefit you to take a look at acquiring additional licenses perpetually while you still can. Number one, the total cost of ownership is lower over the course of, uh, you know, the, the the course of the time that you own the licenses, but it also keeps a homogenous work environment. You know, if everything's the same, uh, it, it's going to be a little bit easier for you to manage. You can have all the licenses on one contract. Uh, it, it's going to be simpler for you to take care of as we move forward. So what I want to show is the, the total cost of ownership. <clears throat> uh, so if we go to the next slide, we put a little chart together here so you can kind of see what this is going to look like. So if you were starting out fresh today and you bought a perpetual license of Vault, there's an initial investment of about $19.95. That's what it costs to buy a perpetual license of Vault. Once you buy that perpetual license of Vault, you can choose to maintain that with an annual maintenance plan. The maintenance plan is $300 per year. Okay, so when you purchase a, a license of Vault, you, you buy the license, you add maintenance to it, so it's the total of that $19.95 plus the $300. Now, what I want to make sure that you understand, in, and you know, all of our customers that have Vault are, are really in it for the long term. So I wanted to give you an idea of the cost associated with a five-year investment in Vault, and this is for a one license example. So you can see with a perpetual license with maintenance, if you buy it today and maintain it for the next five years, your total cost of ownership is $34.95 per license. And this is MSRP. This is this is excluding any uh, incentives that are available right now. We're going to get into those in a second, but this is just uh, standard, uh, you know, base pricing from Autodesk. Now, if you look at the subscription side on the right-hand side, you'll see the initial cost is actually less than half of the initial cost of a perpetual license with maintenance. So it's a thousand and ten dollars to rent a professional license for. However. You know, at the end of that term, you have the option to renew the, the term for another year. Every time you renew it, it's that same $1,010 a year. So, yes, it is a little bit, it's a, it's a lot less of an investment up front. 
However, the five-year cost is that thousand that thousand and ten dollars multiplied by five, which is five thousand and fifty, and we're talking a little bit more than a thirty percent price difference per license over five years, which is a, a pretty um, significant difference in price. So I wanted to point that out to everybody on this call and make sure that you're aware of that. You know, if you if you're considering Vault, this is one of the reasons why you're going to want to do it today versus waiting for two months. So I, I want to make sure that we're clear on this. If you have any questions, feel free to write them into the, uh, the section on the right, and we'll answer those in a little bit here. Uh, the next thing I want to show you is the, the incentives that are available to you today. So there's, there's a couple things. So we have one incentive specifically for Vault, to where if you have an existing maintenance or subscription contract, we, and you renew it, if you renew that contract, you can get 40% off of Vault licenses at the time of renewal. So what that means, let's say you have a maintenance plan that expires in two weeks. If you renew that today, you can add up to 10 Vault professional licenses and get 40% off of those licenses. So there's no discount on the renewal, but there's a big discount on the new products. And that's going to be for up to 10 licenses, at Vault Professional, Vault Office. It even includes some simulation like NAS Train NCAD and uh, some collaboration tools like Navisworks Manage. Uh, we, we covered this in a session about two weeks ago, and you guys can feel free to look at that on our YouTube channel or call us if you have any more questions about that. Uh, but the, the biggest thing is, if you have a contract that's due between now, theoretically now and October 22nd, you can take advantage of this 40% savings. Now, we do realize that not everybody on this webcast or any, uh, not, not all of our customers have a maintenance agreement or a subscription contract that is set to be renewed in the next, you know, few months here. So we have another promotion that I, I want to make sure that we uh, message to you. Um, you know, as Jorge said, not everybody is going to need Vault Professional. There are people outside of engineering that really just need to view files and maybe make some uh, some small changes, things like that. Those people can use Vault Office. So if you have Vault Professional, you're going to want some Vault Office licenses as well. So what we have uh, decided here is everybody that is on this webcast, if you purchase five licenses of Vault Professional, and if that's a maintenance plan or a subscription plan, you get one Vault Office rental for a year for free. Again, it's, a, it's, it's you know, if you buy five licenses of Vault Professional, you're going to get one Vault, I, Vault Office license for free. And you can ask us, you know, more details about that as well, and we'll cover some in the Q&A session here. Uh, but I just want to make sure everybody is aware of that promotion. You know, towards the end of the shift, we are doing things, Autodesk are doing things, to really make sure that everyone that wants to adopt Vault Professional and some of the other products that you have the option to do so. And we're going to help you a little bit with the cost associated to do that. Uh, so let's go to the next slide. Um, so some of the next steps that we're communicating to our customers are, <clears throat> are as follows. So if you have uh, if, if you're already invested in Vault, if you know that Vault is what you want to move forward with, Purchase perpetual licenses when you still can. As you, as we showed you, the total cost of ownership is far less. Most of you already have implementations with perpetual licenses installed already. And if that's the case, it's going to be a lot better for you financially and just from a management perspective to keep everything the same by acquiring additional perpetual licenses now. You know, if, if you're in an environment where you do not expect growth, then all I would recommend doing is keeping what you have up to date. And you can do that by just keeping your maintenance up to date and you can actually renew your maintenance for up to three years. So you know there's the, we're on the tail end of the Autodesk transition to the term-based licensing. Again that's not going to affect existing maintenance plans. However you know you, what you can do is renew them for up to three years, lock in today's rates and not have to worry about number one managing a maintenance plan for three years but number two you know sometimes the prices do increase. And uh, that's something, if you've had a maintenance plan long enough, you know that over the years the prices have gone up. Not significantly, but they have gone up. So locking in today's rates will be uh, very beneficial for you for a financial, in a financial environment. Um, and then the other thing is, is partner with Kativ. You know, Autodesk is the one that creates the software. Kativ is here to really work with our customers one-on-one. -on -one. 
Uh, we've done that for over 30 years now. We've, we've developed partnerships with many of our customers and on things like training, vault implementations, uh, you know, even consulting services for a lot of them. You know, we have a lot of customers that didn't have any data management system when they started and now they have a, a, a couple hundred seats of vault implemented and it's really transformed the way that their engineering, IT, and really even the marketing departments communicate. So if it's something that uh, you, you know you think you want a little help with, you want to learn a little bit more about, definitely contact either myself, Jorge, your account manager at Kativ and ask about what we can do for you to help you not only with Vault but you know simulation and even some design work, rendering services, things like that. Uh, we can definitely do that. Uh, so just to reiterate, purchase perpetual licenses while you still can. If it's something that you're on the fence of, uh, talk to us today and get a real life estimate for what that's going to look like for you. Lock in your maintenance rates. If you don't expect growth, if you just expect uh, everything to stay the same, Renew for up to three years if that's uh, you know if you're eligible to do so, and then talk to us about implementing Vault training, mentoring, other services that we offer to help you become more successful with the tools that you purchased. Uh, and I want to go uh, back to the the promotional slide. So if you can go to the next slide, please. Um, <clears throat> Just want to reiterate, you know, if you have a, an existing maintenance plan, go ahead and, um, you know, talk to us about when that's going to be due. See if you can get the 40% the savings on the Vault Professional Vault Office licenses. If you have any other tools you're looking at, let us know and we'll let you know if that 40% promotion will go to that. If you're planning on acquiring Vault today, um, you know, ask us about how to get Vault Office for free buy five Vault Professionals, you'll get one Vault Office at no charge. And if you're going to buy ten, you'll get two Vault Offices at no charge. So that's there's no uh, limits on that promotion. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass this over to Nigel. I see a, a good amount of questions have come in, and I'm going to let Nigel kind of guide us through that question and answer session. Feel free to type your question uh, in the box, and, and we'll get, answered, get an answer to you in the next couple minutes here. All right, so uh, we have had a couple of questions. We have kind of been answering them on the side, but uh, I feel as if you know there might be a couple that uh, you know might benefit everyone for to hear. Uh, so Andy Johnson uh, just asked, uh, do all CAD users need to be on the same level of Vault? Um, for example, can some people be using Vault Workgroup while some others use uh, Pro and just use the same Vault? Everyone would have to be on the same level. So, like, if you decide to go Vault Professional, that means uh, everybody on the team needs to be Vault Professional. Uh, same thing goes for Workgroup. Everyone would have to be on Workgroup, and same thing for Basic. You, know, you can't have a mixed environment of, of, of the different levels of Vault. Right, but you could have multiple Vaults. You mean, like, different databases or different Vaults? Yes. Yes, you can do that, yes. Sounds and just, yeah, also, you know, Vault Professional works with Vault Office. So those are the two that can work together, right, Jorge? Uh, Vault Office works with both Professional and with Workgroup, actually. Yeah. Okay, very good. Cool. Um, and then uh, Rick asks, will this session be recorded? Um, if they want, you know, if you want to share it with um, some other people within your, your work group. Uh, yes, we are recording it right now. Um, Hello, recording. Uh, and uh, we'll make sure this gets up on YouTube uh, either sometime this afternoon or tomorrow. And uh, we'll go ahead and send it out to all the people who attended as well as um, anyone who registered maybe didn't get to make it out. So um, that'll definitely go out as well. And it uh, looks like we've got another one here from Daniel. And Daniel asks um, about the Vault capabilities with um, other CAD tools, not necessarily Autodesk ones. So uh, Jorge, can you talk about some Vault maybe with SolidWorks, um, some of those other things? Yeah, so Vault Professional does work with all their uh, CAD systems as well. Uh, to give an example, it works with SolidWorks, so there will actually be a SolidWorks add-in. Uh, it also works with MicroStation, uh, and also works with some of the other Autodesk programs. So um, if any of you are using Plant, PNID, or um, Civil 3D, or Revit, those do integrate with Vault Professional as well. So uh, you're not limited to just these products that we saw today. Um, of course, AutoCAD as well being another one. Definitely, for sure. Um, if anyone has any other questions, feel free to type those in. Um, we'll wait here for a little bit. Uh, but among those, uh, along the same kind of lines, um, the 1995 is 
the initial cost for a perpetual, that doesn't include the 40%, correct? Correct, yeah. So the prices that we showed you do not include the 40% savings. So realistically, if you have a, a maintenance plan or a subscription plan that is going to be renewed in the next 90 to, to 120 days anyways, talk to us about the 40% savings. That 1995 actually gets dropped down by about $800. Uh, so and that's good for up to ten licenses. So you'll save uh, about eight thousand dollars on ten licenses of Vault Professional if you do it at the time of renewal. Um, so you know it it's, it's a, drops the Vault Professional down to eleven ninety five per license. And or if you want to try it out for a year and just rent Vault Professional for a year, it brings the annual rental down to just over six hundred dollars. So it's really cost effective if you could take advantage of it with the forty percent savings. Uh, so be sure to contact us if you have any questions about, uh, you know, if you have a maintenance plan or a subscription that's coming due and to see if that qualifies for the 40% off. Any of us here will be happy to answer any of those questions for you. Uh, feel free to reach out to us. Definitely, and that, um, that kind of answers Greg's question here. Um, so Greg asked when that offer ended that ends if you have a maintenance or if you... Yeah, so that offer is valid until July 22, 2016. So we got about a month from tomorrow until that offer is validated. So the way it works is it has to be in conjunction with a renewal of some kind. Autodesk allows us to renew maintenance or subscription plans up to 90 days in advance. So let's say you have a maintenance plan coming due October 22nd. We can offer you that 40% promotional price the only stipulation is you have to renew your maintenance contract at the time of purchase. So you would renew your maintenance a little bit early, you would take advantage of the 40% savings, and by doing that, you lock in today's rates. You know, the rates really aren't going to go down. Vault actually went from 265 a year to 300 a year pretty recently. Um, so you can see that the prices, although they're not a significant change, they do increase. So renewing now uh, will lock in today's rates, which may be different from the rates six months from now. Uh, so there are multiple benefits in doing that, Greg. And if you if you want to see what that would look like for you personally, always reach out to me. I'll be happy to look at what you have and uh, you know c come up with a, a real life scenario for you specifically. Definitely. Um, and uh, Glenn asks, uh, compatible with Windows 10, Jorge? Yeah, Vault client is compatible with Windows 10. Yes. Yeah, just uh, 2017, correct? Is the only supported one? I could have sworn I saw 2016 actually does too. Uh, I can verify and let you know, Glenn, but uh, I'm fairly certain that 10 does cover 2016 and 2017. Definitely. And um, the other thing to note is uh, this question comes up a lot um, as lifeline calls and uh, questions as well as uh, people having some compatibility issues with their CAD tools and uh, their Vault stuff. Uh, in regards to the version year, um, for your CAD tools, you want to be equal or less than the Vault year. If you have... Um, if you have uh, Inventor 2016, you want to be using Vault 2017 or 2016, correct? Correct. Right. You can yes, use Vault 2015. Two years, right, correct, yeah. yeah. Vault has to be the newest thing. And that that's one thing I, I kind of want to touch base on a little bit here just because I have this, this question come up a lot from, from our customers is is in their concern is you know it, they would like to get the latest and greatest tools every year but sometimes it's a bit of a challenge to define the time to migrate from 2015 to 2017 or 2016 to 2017 especially with vault because you know it's it's a two step migration you have the cad and then you have the vault that's one thing that we help with in the in the Kativ vault care is we help with that process, so it's not as tedious, it's not as, as uh, you know, scary, if you even say, uh, to do that. Um, so that's something that we can definitely help with, and, and, and when we do that, it, it gives you the latest tools available to you a, a lot quicker than you may have done in the past. So just always keep that in mind as well, as we're, we're here to help. For sure. Um, Andy asks, uh, can you explain how the, the client versus server licensing works? Jorge, do you know yeah. uh, too much about that? Yeah, if, if it's what I'm understanding, um, so the, the server portion doesn't take a license itself, only the client. So whenever someone is logged into Vault, that's when it actually uh, it takes a license off. So it actually uses the uh, LM tool, so it's a, the license manager that it uses. So you can get a license file. Uh, so again, the Vault server does not actually take up a license, only whenever a client logs into Vault. Definitely. Yeah, and it is that is the same licensing manager that you do have for your network license Autodesk tools, <clears throat> excuse me, as well. So uh, 
it is relatively easy to get that set up, and we can most certainly help you with that as well. Um, and it uh, looks like we've got one more question from Andy. Uh, if we were to subscribe to Vault Pro, uh, can we later downgrade to Workgroup? Is that possible? There is not a direct, at least from a technical standpoint, there's not a direct, you know, a downgrade to it or something like that. You can always go up, uh, but going down is not a, a process that's, uh, you know, just uh, sanctioned and just ready to go to. Yeah, absolutely. So that's uh, another thing I want to point out to that is is after we hit the August 1st date, which is coming up pretty quickly here, everything that you have that's a perpetual license will be locked in as what it is today. So if you have standalone licenses of the product design suite, those will always be standalone licenses of the product design suite. You can continue to renew your maintenance and get the new versions for those, but it will not be possible to convert those to, say, network deployment. Or if you have a product design suite premium, it won't be possible to convert that to a product design suite ultimate. Same goes for Vault Workgroup and Vault Professional. If you have a perpetual license of Vault Professional today and you continue to keep the maintenance going, it's going to be locked in as a Vault Professional. That's, that's what you're going to have. Same with Workgroup. Uh, so, you know, we, we have um, many companies that we're working with. Uh, one in general is a, um, an aerospace company uh, that's really responsible for launching satellites into orbit, and they have Vault Workgroup. And um, they're really considering looking at Vault Professional today because they know in a couple months they're going to be stuck with Vault Workgroup with no trade-in path to the Vault Professional. So it's going to benefit you and it's going to benefit them specifically to make the shift to Professional today. So make sure if, if there's something that you want, let's talk about doing it while the options still exist to do so because in a few weeks those, those options are going to be a, a little bit more limited than they are right now. Definitely. And uh, with that, I think uh, we've covered all of the questions. Uh, if you do think of any, um, feel free to reach out to us here at Lifeline uh, or, you know, any of your sales representatives. We'll definitely make sure that those get covered. If you want to go over your, um, you know, your personal, uh, I guess, what would be the word? Scenario. <laughs> yeah, your, your personal scenarios, um, we can definitely go over those with you kind of on a personal level because it's kind of broad. Everybody's different. So Definitely. feel free to reach out to us if you want to see what these are going to look like for you, for your specific scenario, for your specific company. We're always happy to take a look and, and share with you um, our insight and our suggestions. For sure. And uh, just to remind you guys, this recording will be up with the rest of our YouTube videos, uh, in fact, on our YouTube channel sometime this afternoon or tomorrow morning, um, depending on the speed of the Internet. So it's <laughs> going to be pretty great there. So uh, thank you, everyone, for coming. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Jorge, for being here for us. And uh, I'll see some of you, I guess, on Thursday for our Autodesk Virtual Academy. This week session is on Inventor Presentation and Exploded <laughs> View. I want to see if Joe knew, but he didn't. Um, so, yeah, I'll definitely see you guys later, and I'll get you that recording sent. Adios. See you guys. Thank you. Bye, guys.